Hi there, it's uh, Mr. Evans here, just going through another uh, revision video, the measurement of profit. Um, so we're coming towards the end of uh, this first section, 3.1.1, uh, and we're looking at the measurement of profit in this video. So here is the formula for profit. Uh, profit's the difference between total revenue, in other words, the money that is coming into a business, and total costs, the uh, money that goes out of the business in order to generate those revenues. So uh, let's break that down a bit further, let's look a bit more detail at revenues and costs. So first of all revenue. Revenue is defined as the income received from an organisation's activities. Uh, you will sometimes also see it called turnover, um, sales turnover, sales revenue, sales Okay, so lots of different words for this, but they all mean the same thing. Um, basically, the money an organisation gets from selling its stuff. Well, how do we um, calculate that? Um, we simply take the price per unit, um, and we multiply that by the quantity of units that they sold, which gives us the formula, total revenue equals uh, P times Q, TR equals P times Q. Okay, just worth thinking about ways in which an organisation can increase its revenue. Obviously, uh, there's two sides to the formula. Okay, so two, you know, essentially two ways to increase revenue. You can increase the price per unit, or you can increase the quantity of units that you sell. Obviously, um, they come with their own difficulties. If you increase the price of the unit, will you sell the same volume? Will uh, consumers continue to buy at a higher price? The law of demand says that they won't. A higher price will reduce the number of units that you sell. Equally, increasing the quantity of units that you sell might be quite difficult. Um, you may not have the capacity to do so, there may not be demand, you may have to advertise to do uh, to increase the quantity of units which, which would increase your costs. So um, fairly simple question, how can an organisation increase its revenue, but it will need to think about the impact of the uh, changes that it makes. Um, on to costs. So there are two different types of costs that you know need to know at this stage. Um, the first of which is uh, variable costs, or sometimes known as total variable costs. Um, really important when you're defining variable costs that you make sure you include this little bit here. Variable costs are costs that change directly in proportion to output. In other words, uh, variable costs will change uh, with the more units that a business makes. A common mistake in exams is to define variable costs as costs that change. Okay, um, that's far too vague, we need to make it uh, more precise. Uh, variable costs are costs that change directly in proportion to output. So, um, if we can put a formula there, sometimes you'll see them called total variable costs. Um, we to work out the total variable costs, we would uh, work out the variable cost per unit. In other words, how much is the packaging, how much is the raw materials for each unit. We times that by the output of units and that will give us our total variable costs for making um, a set number of units. Okay, so examples of variable costs the raw materials needed to make the products, the packaging, the wages of staff, power. All of these are examples of things that if you make more units, you're going to have to spend more money on them. If I make zero units of something, then I don't need to spend any money on packaging. As soon as I make 10 units, I'll have to spend some money on packaging. Uh, if I double that, I'll need to spend more money on packaging. So you can see that the um, these variable costs will change directly in proportion to the number of units that I'm making. Okay, so in the example of a cake, um, if I make zero cakes, I will spend zero money on the flour, eggs, uh, etc. If I make a million cakes, I will have to spend far more. Um, 
So if variable costs are costs that change directly in proportion to output, fixed costs can be defined as those costs that will remain constant in the short run regardless of output. So in other words, it doesn't matter how many of these um, cakes, let's take that example that I make, my fixed costs will not change in the short run. So what would be some examples of that? Um, well, any loan repayments that are due, the rent that I might be paying for my bakery, um, administration costs for um, staff not involved in the uh, production of goods, um, the marketing costs, the cost of an advert. So, uh, let's just think about this situation. If my rent is £2,000 a month for my location and I make zero cakes, um, that rent is due. The landlord will be wanting their rent. That is £2,000 that they will be wanting. The landlord really doesn't care how many cakes that I make. Um, I can make really good use of those facilities, be running the bakery 24 hours a day, and I will still, be, uh, still owe uh, two thousand pounds rent so fixed costs it doesn't matter how many I make in the short run these costs will remain constant okay so now we know the difference between variable costs and fixed costs I will be able to work out my total costs which is the cost the total the, which is the cost of production incurred by a business um, in earning its revenue okay so the total costs often abbreviated to TC, is simply uh, calculated by adding my variable costs or total variable costs to the fixed costs or total fixed costs. That will give me my total cost. Okay, so now that I know uh, my total revenue, the total amount of money I've gained uh, from selling my stuff, I can take that from my total costs, which I've calculated by adding my variable to my fixed costs, and that will give me my profit. Okay, that's that. Thank you.